No, this is not the setting for a rock concert. This is the scene for the fourth annual Computer Bowl. But we do have our pop stars here tonight performing on this stage later tonight will be Wild Bill Gates, Dr. John Warnock, Heidi Roizen, Andy M.C. Rappaport, and Bill McCrone, and an all-star cast of computer celebrities set to do battle. Now, last year, the East Coast techies embarrassed the West Coast nerds to regain the computer trivia title. So this year, it's the revenge of the nerds from the West to see who will be number one in 1992. So pick your team, play along with us as we bring you Computer Bowl 4 on the special edition of Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Computer Bowl version 4.0, known as Computer Bowl 4, and presented by the Association for Computing Machinery. We're here tonight in Boston at the Park Plaza Castle for what has been billed as the hassle in the castle. We're on the East Coast because the East Coast team won last year for the second time to bring home the bacon, but more importantly to bring home that beautiful Computer Bowl, a symbol of a TKO, a technology knockout. We have a room full, or should I say a castle full, of East Coast fans here, I assume, right? East Coast fans? Okay. But we are joined tonight by live audiences connected via satellite at Xerox Park in Palo Alto, California. You guys out there? Yes. And at Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington. You guys out there? Let's assume so. All right, you West Coasties out there, here we go. Without further ado, let me introduce the challengers from the West. In this corner, over here, from the Mass Park Computer Corporation, Jeff the Killer Kelg. From, from Alex Brown and Sons, Ruth Ann, the mighty Quinlan. From Slate Corporation, Vern, the ace, Rayburn. From Adobe Systems, Dr. John, Knock Knock, Warnock. And last but not least, the captain of the West Coast team from the asset management company, John, Future, Shock. <laughs> All right, now let's turn. What's, what's in that? What's in that, John? <laughs> Jolt, okay. All right, what can the East Coast do about that? Here we go, the opposing corner. The home team, the defending world champions of computer trivia, the East Coast team, starring from Ziv Davis' Bill, the Elbow McCrone. <laughs> recital <laughs> from Fluent Incorporated, Dr. David Hash Nelson. <laughs> from the mortuary firm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> from the technology research group, Andy M.C. Rappaport. Communications, Paul Bearer Severino. Yeah. 
And finally, the captain of the defending champions from the East from Bachman Information Systems, Charlie Johann Sebastian Bachman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. With dignity, please. All right, here's how we're going to play the game. The black against the black. All right, there are going to be four rounds in the computer bowl. Round one, round two, round three. East Coast, round four, very good, okay. Now on each round, there will be two kinds of questions. There are toss-up questions. They'll be worth 10 points each. Any individual player on either team can answer a toss-up question. There are also special bonus round questions which will be directed to one team only. These will be multi-part questions worth up to 30 points per bonus round. The bonus round questions can be answered only by the team captain, though members of that team may consult with the captain before he answers. If your answer to a toss-up question is wrong, any player from the other team will have a chance to answer that same question and also get the 10 points. If you ring the buzzer before we have finished asking the question and your answer is wrong, the opposing team gets a chance to answer that question and the question is then worth 20 points. So if you are a gambler, be sure. Okay, remember panelists, you must ring your buzzer, be recognized by me before you answer the question or your answer will not count. The question will go to the other team and they'll just repeat what you said and get all the points. Now we know how argumentative all you guys can be. So we have two resident expert judges appropriately adorned out there whose job it will be to decide on any disputed answers. From the East Coast, the MVP of last year's winning East Coast team, Pamela McCordick, your honor. And from the West, the captain of the West Coast team last year, president of teammaker company, Heidi Poison Roizen. And to make sure everything is all above board here, since I know how seriously all you guys take this game, all computer bowl answers have been verified accurate by the International Data Corporation. <laughs> and the scoring is being supervised by someone <laughs> from Price Waterhouse. <laughs> Are you ready to play? You bet. Yeah. All right, it is my pleasure now to introduce to you the West Coast MVP from Computer Bowl 2, the official examiner from Computer Bowl 3, a man who could not be more famous among computer users unless he pulled up Lee Iacocca and started doing those Windows commercials himself. <laughs> the chairman of the board of Microsoft, Bill Gates. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, start your brains. Bill. Got the uh, secret questions? I do. Okay. We are ready to begin. Here is your first toss-up question worth 10 points. InfoWorld columnist Robert Cringely has written a book entitled Accidental Empire. <laughs> There's a lengthy subtitle to the book which begins, How the Boys of Silicon Valley Make Their Millions, Battle for and Competition, and... Jeff Cobb, West Coast. Still can't get dates. That is absolutely right. <laughs> 10 points for the West. <laughs> Next question, Bill. In the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, the HAL 9000 computer indicated when it first started operating. Jeff Kalb West. 1992, January 26th. I'm afraid that is not the question, Jeff. <laughs> Close, but not quite. So we'll have to give the question out to the West Coast, and you can get 20 points for answering this question. The East Coast, I'm sorry, the East Coast. According to the movie, would HAL be operational right now on May 1st, 1992? All right, Dave Nelson. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> We are sticklers, we are sticklers. However, the next question, Bill. According to the movie, exactly when did Hal start working? <laughs> Dave Nelson, East Coast. January 12th, 1992. Absolutely right, 10 points for the East. 
All right, the score is West Coast 10, East Coast 30. Here is the next toss-up question, Bill. Toy com com company giant Mattel tried to enter the personal computer business many years ago, but its entry died an early death. What was the name of that Mattel computer? Hello, hello. All right, John Schock. In television? Absolutely right. Ten points for the West. Okay, we are into our first bonus round, and this will be for you, the East Coast, so you've got a chance to even widen your lead a little bit, and the subject will be appropriately orphans, computer orphans. Chance to get 30 points here. In 1985, three companies discontinued their line of personal computers. I'm going to give you the name of the company, and I want you to tell me the name of the orphan, the computer that was discontinued. For 10 points, the company is Digital Equipment Corporation. Rainbow? Rainbow's correct for 10 points. Okay. The company is Coleco. Adam? Please, please, in the audience, restrain yourself. I know it's difficult. 10 points for the East Coast on Adam. All right, for the final 10 points in this bonus round, the company is Apple. Lisa? Lisa's correct, full 30 points. Very good. Okay, the score now. The East Coast is ahead by 60 to 20. The audience is doing very poorly. Please restrain yourself and don't yell out the answers. Bill, the next question. Boris, Boris Babion is considered to be the top computer designer in the former Soviet Union. He is currently finishing the, the design of his newest supercomputer called the Elbrus 3. What American computer company? Dave Nelson, East Coast. Sun Microsystems. Absolutely right. Let's finish the question, Bill. Recently hired, Borbus <laughs> Fabian. <laughs> All right, next question, Bill. 70 to 20 favor the East right now. C++ has become a popular programming language. Where was C++ first developed? John Schock, West Coast. Bell Labs. Absolutely You're right. 10 points for the West. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Too late. <laughs> First come, first served. Okay, Bill, next. In 1952, CBS News made computer history by using a computer for the first time to predict the winner of the 1952 presidential election. What computer? John Warnock West. Univac. Univac is correct. Yes. Another 10 points for the West Coast. Next toss-up question. The premier conference for chip designers is called ISSCC. What do the letters ISS? Jeff Kalb, West Coast. International Solid State Circuits Conference. Another 10 points for the West Coast. <laughs> OK, you're catching up here, guys. Right now, the score is East Coast 70, West Coast 50. Here is your chance, a 30-point bonus round. Get ready, answer through your captain. The subject is acronyms. What do the letters, I'm going to give you two of them here. What do the letters DDE and OLE stand for? <laughs> DDE is Dynamic Data Exchange. OLE. OLE is Object Linking and Embedding. That is absolutely right for 10 points. All right, we're closing in. Here's your next pair of acronyms. What do the letters ALU and CRC stand for? An ALU is an arithmetic and logic unit. That's one. CRC. And a, a CRC is a... Cyclic redundancy checksum. Well, that's Sometimes right. called a cyclic that's redundancy right. check. That's right, a cyclic redundancy check. Okay. Here is the third and final part of this bonus round on acronyms. We know that EGA stands for Enhanced Graphics Adapter, and that VGA stands for Video Graphics Array. What does XGA stand for? It's the Extended Graphics Adapter. So, wait. Not. Oh. The, it's the enhanced graphics adapter. That's even worse. <laughs> I like it the way it is. At the end of the first round, the score, West Coast 70, East Coast 70. Okay. <laughs>
This is round two right now, and the score stands at 70 for the West, 70 for the East. A little confusion on the last question we just had. The official answer I have is XGA stands for Extended Graphics Array, not Adapter. I think the Microsoft Dictionary shows it's different. Uh, I think Bill might even agree with you. Yes, we've looked But it up. we are going to move on. Toss-up questions, Bill. The Kim 1, the Altair 8800, and the Commodore PET were all pioneering microcomputers. Of those three, which is the only one which was a single board computer? Andy Rappaport. The Kim one. Kim one is correct. 10 points for East. You're ahead. <laughs> In 1975, the first computer game was sold. It was called Encounter. On what medium was it sold? John Shock, West Coast. Paper tape. Paper tape is absolutely right. <laughs> Didn't even have to wait for the multiple choices. Next question, Bill. During the 1989 San Francisco earthquake, many Silicon Valleys got a bit shook up. Among those affected were Apple, HP, Borland, Sun, and Tandem. One of those companies responded following the earthquake by conducting business as usual. Ruth Ann Quinlan West. Borland in the parking lot. That's right. Conducted business as usual in tents in the parking lot. Another 10 points for the West. Next question. The Whirlwind, the ENIAC, the EDSAC, and the BINAC were all important computers in the development of computing technology. Two important computer pioneers were Eckert and Mockley. Of those four computers, which didn't they work on? That's the Whirlwind, the en Yes, Jeff Kalb. The Whirlwind. The Whirlwind is right. And the question, which, which one did they not work on? And the answer is the Whirlwind. OK, next question, Bill. In 1976, personal computer history was made when the first Apple I computers were sold. The first batch of Apple's ones were sold to one organization. What was that organization? Was Vern Rayburn West? The bike shop. The bike shop is correct. <laughs> I bought them. All right, the score right now, West Coast 110, East Coast 80, or behind by 30. And guess what? Here's a 30-point bonus round. Are you ready? And the subject is Apple Computer. According to the book <laughs> Accidental Empires, the prototypes of Apple's first laser writer printer were given to three computer companies. Can you name at least two of them? Who got the prototypes of Apple's first laser writer printer? I need two company names. And I need it quickly. Time, time, time. Yes. Microsoft That's and one. Aldous. Aldous is two. Very good. <laughs> Lotus, Lotus was the third, by the way. OK, for your next shot at 10 points in this bonus round on Apple, according to Jean-Louis Gasset, the finder on the original Apple Macintosh had another name during development. What was it called then? The searcher, the seeker, or the flounder? <laughs> Consult and give me an answer. The searcher, the seeker, or the flounder? The seeker. That's incorrect. It was called the flounder. <laughs> All right, last chance for 10 points now. You're only 20 points behind. When the Apple III first came out, there was a problem with loose ICs. To remedy the problem, the company told Apple III owners to do something to make sure their integrated circuits were firmly in their sockets. What were the users instructed to do? One, was it drop the computer one foot onto a flat surface? <laughs> Two, push each chip into its socket by hand? or three, stand on the motherboard? <laughs> to drop the computer one foot. Believe it or not, that's the answer. Drop the computer one foot on the ground. 10 more points for the East. OK, at the end of this bonus round, the West just ahead by 110 to 10. Next toss-up, Bill. In 1945, Vannevar Bush wrote an essay called As We May Think. In it, he proposed a revolutionary new nonlinear information retrieval system. 47 years later, that concept is now known as what? Hello out there. We have Vern Rayburn of the West. 
pin computing. No, I'm sorry. That's not <laughs> Good plug. Good plug. That is not the right answer. Do we have an answer from the East Coast for 10 points? Quickly. Anybody want to try it? Going once. Going twice. We're out of time. The answer is hypertext. Okay, next question, Bill. What was the first computer to control a machine tool? Was it the ENIAC, Whirlwind, or the Mobidick? John Shock, West Coast. The Mobidick. Mobidick at MIT is the correct answer. I knew it was one of the MIT. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm very, very sorry. You're wrong. <laughs> Guys, write so many times I fell for it. No, I'm sorry. It was the whirlwind at MIT. The whirlwind at MIT. Okay, you guys don't get those 10 points. When we go along, it's 110 to 100. You're still ahead. <laughs> Next question, Bill. In the uh, well. Bill <laughs> 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 McCrow. The whirlwind. Okay, now hold it. Judges, no. judges, judges. What's your no verdict way. here? Do they get a chance no to way. answer that or no not? Way. Yeah, I think we should let him pass. Quickly. You gave the answer. out one earlier. Yeah, he gave the answer. Got We're going to have to let that one pass, but let we'd like you to make a mistake judgment. in the favor of the East Coast in okay, the future, fair please. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Next question. In the 1960s, a digital computing technology was announced based on the movement of fluids or compressed gases rather than electrons. What was the name of this technology? Vern Rayburn West? Fluidetics. Well, judges, I'm after you again. Is that the correct answer? Fluidetics, says Vern Rayburn. The judges say no. The answer is fluidics. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about it, huh? You know, some of us knew the answer. And, and we had to get to it. Oh, it's rough up here. <laughs> that was such an easy one. Andy Rappaport. Fluidics. <laughs> uh, you can't give him the you question just, after you've you given the answer. the answer. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's my fault, I guess. What do you say, judges? I think that's my fault. You'll get another shot. It is oh. one to... Oh. Yes. We said no. you got to give them the points. Give Don't the make points. any more mistakes, but give them the points this time. Give them the points. Well, you yeah. have to say yeah. it. Yeah. You gave him the answer. It is 110 to 110. Can we go ahead no, it's now, not. guys? Even? Yeah. Next the question. P the PDP-1 computer had a word size of how many bits? Jeff Cal. 18 bits. 18 bits is correct. 10 points for the West. Great, great. Computer viruses were much in the news this year. There is a book called Computer Viruses by author John McAfee. In that book, McAfee names what he believes to be the first computer to be infected by a virus. Was it the Xerox 530, the PDP-11, or the IBM 360? First computer to be infected by a Xerox, John Schock? IBM 360. That is not the correct answer. Ten points over here on the east. This could be a big ten points. Who would like? To? Yes, Bill. Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. PDP 11. That's also wrong. Oh. <laughs> Which means the answer was the Xerox 530. All right, we're going into a bonus round now. The score is the West slightly ahead, 120 to 110. This is a bonus round for the West Coast. A chance to widen your lead. The subject is the Alto computer. <laughs> Luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. All right, Dad. The Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, known as Xerox Park, is famous for many computer innovations. One such innovation was the early development of the Alto computer, which used a mouse for an input device. How many buttons were on the Alto mouse? The, there were a couple different versions, but the most common one was a three-button mouse. Three is the correct answer we'll take. <laughs> and I have one at home. All right, let's see how good you guys were. The three buttons were color-coded. What three colors no. were on the buttons? There were only a couple, red, blue, and yellow. That's right, another 10 points for the West, okay. <laughs> the last chance at 10 points on the Alto. The Alto computer came with a built-in text editor. What was the name of the text editor? Alpha, Bravo, or Tango? 
was bravo. Bravo is the correct answer, another 10 points. Okay, where are we? Can we get extra credit for who wrote it? We are at the end of round two. The West Coast is ahead by 150 to 110. In spite of everything. In spite of everything. <laughs> All right, for those of you here in the Park Plaza Castle in Boston, and for those of you watching live via satellite in Palo Alto and Redmond, please stay seated. We'll resume the computer bowl in just a minute after we take a very brief non-commercial break. Now, for those of you watching this at home on television, that's it for this special edition of Computer Chronicles. If you want to know how it all ends up, you'll have to come back next week and watch the last half of the Computer Bowl, rounds three and four, more computer trivia, as we determine whether the East or the West earns the title Computer Masters of the Universe. We'll see you here next week. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1-800-366-9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.